Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it would be it would be gracious of me as a former Minister of Commerce, a former banker, not to support this resolution. And I definitely support the resolution in front of us, Mr. Speaker. However, Mr. Speaker, I will say the current Minister of Commerce, who, outside of politics, I have a lot of love for her. She is, we said we share the same birth date. We share the same principles as it relates to finance, Mr. Speaker. But so I would have preferred, I would have preferred to have heard the former Minister of Commerce say that the, the current Minister of Commerce say and, and former, and former, yes, that's right. Current Minister of Commerce say that the Ministry of Commerce is continuing, continuing what what was done by the former Minister of Commerce in 2019. And I say so, Mr. I say so, and I was a bit disappointed, and I'll tell you why, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, you would remember, you would recall, in November 2019, we came to this House and we passed an amendment to the Finance Act, particularly to assist the service sector. And you would know in the past, it was only the tourism sector, the agricultural sector that were benefiting from various incentives. And we came into this house and we identified five services sectors, professional services, ICT, ITC sector, health and wellness, creative sectors, and the entertainment sector, Mr. Speaker, where we identified these sectors so that they would have been able to access Items coming into St. Lucia duty-free once they qualify. And this was significant, Mr. Speaker, because a lot of these small businesses fall under that bracket. And the intention going forward was to widen that scope of services sectors because a lot of people um, were struggling, particularly in paying the kind of duties that they had to pay up front on, on the on the, on the, on the doors. And the minister, I'm sure, would have gotten quite a few um, memos to cabinet um, where people have been um, 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 requesting such um, approvals. So um, this is not, you know, um, to say today that this is the first time. I was a bit disappointed, Minister, because I think, you know, it's, a con it's, a, it's continuing you know, in terms of what we do in the Ministry of Commerce to help um, small businesses. I would also wish to mention, Mr. Speaker, that... I came to the Parliament as well to ensure that VAT, which was being paid by the manufacturing sector up front when, when um, goods were, raw material was being brought in, we removed that upfront payment so that you could have paid after production, Mr. Speaker. And that was significant because the manufacturers were complaining that that upfront payment was a bit, you know, strenuous on them. So these are things that was done, Mr. Speaker, to help small businesses, Mr. Speaker. And I, 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 I want to echo, you know, the previous contribution by the member from Gifford South where he spoke to the exorbitant fees administration fee. It's, it's something we need to look at. It's significant in terms of the kind of administrative fees. And Minister spoke to it. She said, um, um, I think 8 million and the other 2 million goes into other technical areas. This 2 million, 1.5, 1.5. That, that's significant and it can help quite a few um, businesses in my community of, of Chosel Saldivus. Um, and I, I think also, uh, the Prime Minister in, in, in the youth economy also had a $10 million and about $4 million of that was going into the whole technical thing again. So it is something I think we need to look at in terms of the amount of money that goes into this um, technical administrative aspect of things. That can, that can help. But I think this is wonderful. I'm looking forward to a lot more than that because we have a lot of young people who now want to be their own bosses and they want you know that kind of support from and particularly in you know post covid we have a lot of young businesses that are suffering and i want to make a plea mr speaker if you allow me this afternoon for the government and particularly the minister of finance to look at a matter which is hurting quite a few um, small businesses if you can call them that the vendors the malawis when we have entertainment 
activities, when we have big shows, you know, the amount of things that these promoters have to go through. First of all, they have to ensure that they don't owe inland revenue. Um, that's one of the requirements. It's, it's, it's not anything new, it has been there. But I think post-COVID, we need to look at providing a sort of a, a brick. Because don't underestimate the, 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 the dependency on a lot of vendors outside of these shows. Okay, it's significant. And without these shows, they don't make a bread or they make less bread. So I think we, we need to look at maybe um, um, you know, softening it a little bit in terms of the number of things that they need to, they, they, they are asking for. Um, I also want to take the opportunity, the Minister of Fisheries um, um, stepped out, but I wanted to take, because fishermen are small businesses too. And um, recently a lot of the fishermen in my community have been complaining about the high cost of the, um, the nets, the, the, the wire net to catch their pot fish, and also the quality. And I think and the water is it? See? Yep. <laughs> well, that's that's another thing altogether. Um, so, one of these days we will have that conversation, you know, Minister of Housing, about that excavator. We'll have because it's a very interesting story. Okay, I may have more background information than you. Okay, so, um, Mr. Speaker, whether we should, you know, look at various subsidies for the fishermen as it relates to the cost of that. Um, of, the, of, of that wire, uh, Mr. Speaker. So I'm looking forward, Madam um, Minister, Member for, for Soufre Francais Jacques, at the business forum, which is going to be held in Chouzel on Sunday. Um, and I expect quite a few business, young business people from the community to attend, that they will be, you know, be in a position to qualify for assistance under that um, facility. You know, and that the process is very equitable across the board. So that being said, Mr. Speaker, I support the resolution for others. Thank you very much.